Uh, does that mean that we're already started? Kick it off, yeah. Dino. All right. What, what a good-looking crowd. What, what a good-looking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sure you guys are wondering why I brought you here today. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching I've been watching Survivor. Is that a line from that? Survivor? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you guys are wondering thing? why I brought you here today. Oh. Is that, that's we have thing? an immunity challenge. You're, uh, what is it? You're, uh, you're, it's Merge Day! Sorry. D Danger Dan doesn't even now. have a television. <laughs> <laughs> it's Survivor every day around here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, are you in Texas or are you in New Mexico? I'm in Texas. When do you go to, do you go to New Mexico in the winter or the summer? Summer. Well, we actually, I took the kids up there for New Year's Eve and got them on the mountain snowboarding oh, cool. for the first time. Cool. How'd they do? They did. They got to where when they crashed, it hurt them. You know, they were. Did going, they wear shoes? Uh, they did actually. That was a big complaint. The fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the guy trying to fit him up was like, I don't know what it is, but none of these shoes fit your kid. And I'm like, I don't know either. Because their feet are splayed out. Yeah, they're just being so barefoot feet. for so yeah, long. They're square, yeah, they're like, you know. <laughs> Wait, wait, I, I want to go back to that one real quick. Last time I talked to you, I talked to you just around Christmas time, and you said, man, I hope to God my kids hate snowboarding because it's so damn expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did say that. Do, do they like it? Do they not like it? No, they did like it. Yeah, yeah, they liked it a lot. All right. Well, because they saw their dad doing it, and, you, you know, they were just like, dad loves it. I don't know. Every, when they saw me doing it, I was just like throwing snow at them. I was just making sure nobody else ran into them. And then when they fell down, I would just plow snow onto them. <laughs> uh, and they got lucky. My brother, my wife's husband or boyfriend, he taught snowboarding for eight years, and he happened to be there. So they got like a legit lesson instead of me nice. just telling them to do it, you know, with That's not great. much. What's the dynamic? or Because um, if I'm out there trying to teach my kids how to do anything like that it's going to get heated rather rapidly. That's why I'm saying they got lucky that he was there, you know? Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how. I'm like, go to your toe side, now go to your heel side. I don't, I don't know exactly how to make that happen. Just fucking do it, kid, you know? <laughs> yeah. That works really good when you're trying to teach your girlfriend how oh. to do it, too. Yeah, they love that. They love it when you yell at them and yeah. just throw words around like that. <laughs> you should see Stacy and I in the kitchen. Pretty awesome. <laughs> that same kind of thing. Oh boy! Like what? Like that's uh, not how you make chicken Kiev. I just, I, I don't know. It's like a two type A's trying to do stuff, and it just doesn't, uh, doesn't work out real well. And and by the end of it, if one doesn't evacuate, it turns into a, a bad situation. <laughs> so I just back up. Yeah. <laughs> what are the what are the kind of foods? I want to. I want a little bit of insight into the higher well, household. Well, I'm I'm like. I'm consistent. I like, you know, chicken, rice, and beans, steak, asparagus, simple shit. She's Polish, so she likes sauce. <clears throat> so it's like every piece of chicken has to have sauce and cheese on it. Gravy and... Gravy or... Yeah. yeah. Um, she likes to get funky and, you know, we are, that's it. one of the argument points that we have. It's like... <laughs> It's too You're dry. You're so boring. What the fuck? <laughs> like, well, uh, hang, hang on. Before we get into couples therapy, let's let's set this <laughs> let's set this podcast <laughs> straight. <laughs> Sorry, Proc. We need to try to run away with the, uh, yeah, the show. I was there. surprised you hadn't jumped <laughs> yeah. in before now. Okay, okay. We got to begin. We're doing a podcast here. This is a Mama Tried Flat Out Friday podcast with our special guest, Danger Dan, all the way from north of Dallas. Is that Animal. right? West of Dallas. West. You, West. Right? And this is our number 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't very confident. This is our, our, our podcast. And so thanks, Danger Dan. I think it's really kind of funny that of all the people we could have chosen to help us do our first remote, it was you. And, and what I mean by that is I just never thought you even had a computer, much less a headset and internet. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put my podcast out somehow. <laughs> no, you know, Dan, you came to Milwaukee like a bunch of years ago, actually. I was going to try to look up the photo, but remember when you came and you did, you interviewed me with all your soul setup, your, your portable remote setup yeah. at my house, like in like 2017 or 2018 or something. Yeah, like I went that. to your house. I went to Jeremy's house. Warren was just gone. Uh, and then I rode to your spot on the Mississippi River and it was oh. so fucking sick. 
Uh, that's yeah, that right. was good. That's On the right. way to the, I went to the X Games and then Sturgis after that. All right. Damn um, the X Games. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's yeah, good. You are recording the audio on your end, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're good. There we go. It's our first time. <laughs> well, I, I, so I, I, I'm impressed that you have the internet and, and these things. I just didn't think you'd be as technical, technically savvy. Of course, you've got many other gifts and, and abilities. I just didn't think this would be one of them, and that's a compliment. But I do want to go back to you imagining you snowboard, and I, I can't imagine you having modern pants. Imagine you having, like, burlap <laughs> snow pants <laughs> and some sort of yeah. oil-stained jean jacket, yeah. and you're out there on the mountain uh, with the kids. Just Carhartt coveralls. I was gonna say, yeah, and that same old gray western shirt that you always uh -huh. wear. Uh huh. Yeah. I like it. I like it. And none of, by the way, that none of that is a, a criticism. Do you wear a helmet? No. Goggles? Yeah. No, I didn't wear goggles. Buck knife. Yep. Leatherman. Yep. No Leatherman. <laughs> <laughs> Just a belt buckle. <laughs> Right on, right on. And going back to Scott's point about other, we have have we have a long history of podcasting, if you will. We did do individual shows, and then I, you guys drove down or flew down to see Dan. Yeah, did that ever get see the light of day? Logan lost it. Fucking Logan. It was a great interview. I, I that am was sure. the best. It was good. We had you, a, it was such a good time. And we remember we had that whole setup with that car battery and like. <laughs> oh <the> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys caught me like right in the middle of my South America journey, dude. And I was fucking fret. I was full of stories at that point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. And it was nice seeing the homestead and then that whole herd of cattle like walked right through the set. Yeah. And that was a good time. That place is really beautiful, Dan. That, and, your home and it's, your shop, all that is so great. Thank Such you. Such a nice setup. It's too bad Brian had to lose that. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Do you mean lost it? Like I put it on this desk and now it's not there? No, or... I, I never got the file from Logan. I got the audio somewhere from Scott. I have the, the, hard, the, the card still on my desk, but I never got. When the, I got the video, I never got the video from Logan. Did did he did he just somehow like it, it didn't get recorded or? I don't know. Huh. You can call him. Let's call him. <laughs> That'll be our next remote guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. An employee meeting with Logan. <laughs> His annual review. <laughs> to his credit, he, he hasn't screwed up since. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> now it just gives an to, gives us an excuse to go do it again. Yeah. To his credit, Logan's he's a he's a good he's he, he's he's good. That he doesn't screw up very often. So that you know, I bet you it's somewhere. <laughs> We all got drunk. We were drinking that day. Yeah. Hmm. So. That's well, remember we had those. Brought, we we ahead, went Dan. to that Mexican food joint, had those margaritas afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that place was awesome. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that but that whole good. area is so rad out there. Yeah, don't tell anybody. Yeah, all right. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cut that part. Yeah. I keep seeing <laughs> stuff on Instagram, what you, what you can buy in Texas when no. it comes to houses, bro. So no, if it's Instagram not. says it's true, then yeah. you're screwed. Well, I brought, that up, Dan, I brought that up to just make sure that we didn't cross-reference what we already talked about, and thank God it's lost, so I don't have to worry about repeating content. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those of you that don't know, by the way, we are honored to have you because you are the podcast, um, making a bold statement, the godfather of motorcycle podcasting. Is that too bold of a statement? I don't I think that's pretty apropos. Yeah, the one out there now. Yeah. You, you're saying yes, like you agree with that. Dan. I mean, Someone I'm, else saying said this to you? I'm saying that's a bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> was someone else doing what you do before you did it? There is. There was multiple people that had done it uh, before I did it. Yeah. Who? 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 who let me do my homework. Who? Yeah, who was your? Who was your uh, inspiration? Uh, For getting a Zoom recorder and chopping around the states and. Yeah, I don't know. Friends. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what gave you the idea? What gave you the blueprint to the idea? Oh, that I mean, Joe Rogan listening to his podcast and he would always have like his friends on and he would just say, you guys need to start a podcast. And they'd be like, what the fuck? You know, and I just heard him say, you should start a podcast too many times. And I was like, I know a bunch of weird motherfuckers. So here, here we are. <laughs> but, but in this in this stratosphere of a million podcasts, because Joe Rogan does come up when we do talk with other people, why they 
did a podcast. Joe Rogan seems to be the inspiration for many yeah. many outlets. Whether you're into black metal or you're into uh, zippers, mm -hmm. there's a podcast <laughs> for you. And the person that started it was probably influenced by Joe Rogan. Uh, but you took this. You, you, my, my point is, you still stand the test of time. There are, are a million motorcycle podcasts. Are there a million motorcycle podcasts? Maybe two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, but Danger wow. Dan is still in the top, still in the top five. <laughs> Mama tried flat on Friday, maybe 120,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were in the mid pack. We're in the top, yeah. <laughs> mid pack. We're in the top. Uh... So that all, that's a compliment that your stuff, your, your content is still uh, entertaining. It's well, still. You, um... you know, luckily, like nobody has a say. Even if there's nobody listening, I can still put that shit out every week. So, you know, that's. Pr but I think really the hardest thing has been continuing on, you know, like. Just not stopping and can just continuing to do it. Have you have you been consistent like that every week for whatever? I, no, no. I was. I think for the first three years I did it every week. Uh, the biggest lull I think was the last three months. I kind of like just. Why? I don't know. I wouldn't say I was burnt out. I was just kind of like. I don't know, just Other just because I can, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think a little bit distracted, and since then, like I decided at the beginning of this year, I was gonna hit it hard. And now I've got a fucking full calendar all the way up until Mama tried. All right, and That's then good. and then beyond that as well. So, when you were doing all those legs of the South America trip, did you always bring your gear with you, your recording gear with you? I that. did. I did. Yeah. It was with me most of the time. But most everything I recorded on a cell phone down there, unless I specifically stopped and talked to somebody. There was a lot of just like voice memos that I recorded. Oh, okay. That's yeah. cool, though. That's you have more trips like touch. that in, in the works? Or are you, what's, you grounded? The wife's like, stay home? No. I mean, that one, I mean, I didn't even plan on doing that trip. You know, it just kind of like grew out of a smaller one. Uh, I'm going to ride through Mexico a couple times this year. Uh, I think I decided last week that I am going to ride to Alaska, but I don't, I don't You decided have... that last week? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, had, I never really like thought it was yeah. necessary, but I decided last week, I'm like, you know what? I probably yeah. should just go up there. I decided to Alaska. sort my whites from my colored laundry. So that's where <laughs> I'm coming from. <laughs> uh, but you know, Alaska's pretty close. So, yeah, <laughs> relatively speaking, I was really. Close are you going to do it guys. on the Pan Am? Are you going to do it on the Pan Am? Yeah, or are you doing it on absolutely. Your... All right. Yeah, unless I go break my Sportster out of the museum and take it. <laughs> no, oh, hang, hang on. There's a lot. There's a lot of juicy content here, uh, and I want. I want to just follow up, get our listeners caught up. Let's just pretend no one's ever met you, uh, Dan. Can you describe to us what just this this trip was that Warren and Scott were just talking about? The, the South American leg trip. What, is, what does this mean to someone that, that has no idea? Um, so in 21, my friend put on a race called the Mezcal Moto Rally. And it was like a rally race from Austin, Texas to Oaxaca, Mexico. And it was three days of tacos, tequila, or Mezcal. And, and then he had like all these challenges to do along the way to gain more points. And he, you know, he tallied them up and somebody won at the end. And I was looking at the map and Oaxaca's pretty far down there. It was like halfway to where my buddy's at in Costa Rica. So I was like, man, if it takes me three days to get to Oaxaca and everything's good, I'll just spend another three days riding to my friend's place in Costa Rica. Uh, and I did that. It actually took me seven days to get from my house to Costa Rica and when I got there, my friend was like, you're an idiot. You have to go all the way to the bottom. You can't go home now. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I probably should talk to my wife about that. So I flew home and I got my wife and I brought her back and I put her on the beach in Costa Rica. And that's when I told her that she was going home and I was going to go south. And I, <laughs> I rode to the bottom of South America. All right. All right. That's cool. Yeah. No, but, but no, zoom in a little bit. So you, you did those in uh, over a month, over a year. What was that? Yeah, so I wrote, once I decided in Costa Rica I was going to go to the bottom, I decided to like slow my pace down a little bit. Uh, and I went down and saw Rouser in Panama. And then 
went to Panama City. And from there, I stashed the bike at the dealership and flew home and uh, went to Sturgis and did some things. Did had some other obligations that I had committed to. So I took care of those. And then I went back in the fall and I flew from Panama to Bogota and spent another, I spent, I think I spent three weeks in Colombia. And then when I got to Ecuador, the plan was to go to Quito and stash the bike, but Ecuador is like experiencing a bunch of protests. The roads are blocked. I got hemmed up at this. I mean, it ended up being like a great spot to get hemmed up at as a farm and a winery and a it was incredible, but nobody was there except for me and all the guests or all the uh, employees. And then I finally made it there. Yeah, I did it in sections. You know, I went to Quito and then I came back home and then I went from Quito down to Santiago through Peru. And, and instead of doing the Pan America Highway, I just picked the, the most dangerous roads in every country and rode to those. <laughs> you, you just Googled that? Yeah, there's actually a lot of articles about the most deadliest roads in the world. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, again, I, I'm not done with this story real quick, and I'll let these guys have you when I'm done with you. It's a long I'm almost story. Almost done, though. But why did you spend three months, three weeks in, uh, in Colombia? You were stuck in Colombia, or it was that hard to travel through? Dude, have you ever been to Colombia? I have not. I could have spent three months. It was amazing. I've heard it's awesome. You know, I mean, the, so, the food was, so was great. You, the women so you enjoyed were, your time. You oh, weren't, yeah. You weren't stuck. You weren't stuck on bad roads. You were actually no. just. Now I was like zigzagging back and forth across. They have like, what is it? There's like the Bogota Valley and the Medellin Valley. And there's this giant, it's the, where the Andes start. The Andes mountain range start and cuts right through the middle of Colombia. And I was just going back and forth across that mountain range. And, and then at the bottom was the first dangerous road of South America. And it was called the Trampoline of Death. And it was so fucking sick. And it, you know, it, and when I was looking up the roads, it didn't make it to like the top five or a lot of lists doesn't, they don't even really talk about it. So I didn't expect it to be, you know, that crazy, but I get there and I, uh, what happened? Let me think about this. Oh yeah. So I stayed in some crazy jungle town where it was like everybody at the hostel I was at left to go do ayahuasca the night I got there. <laughs> and they asked me if I wanted to go and I, you know, I can't imagine I would have ever have said yes to that. But when I was at this hostel and they were like giving me a tour and I like, they take me to the kitchen and there's like, t you know, there's dishes everywhere that were clean. Like the kitchen was not in order. And I was like, man, I can't go do drugs with you guys in the jungle if you can't like keep a fucking clean kitchen where we can eat food. <laughs> These so, are Dennis standards. I, you know, I do. Uh, so anyways, the next morning I go to this road and my dumbass, I don't take any food or I don't have anything except for my bike and I had some cigarettes uh, <laughs> and it was supposed to be like a four. It was going to take like four to five hours and then it was another hour or two to like the first town. So I'm thinking like a long morning ride. And anyways, I get like 30 minutes in and there's a bunch of traffic and there's like, it's crazy. I mean, there's fucking waterfalls. There's a cliff on one side. It's rocks and ferns and plants everywhere and clouds and it's raining and I get to this like a line of cars and I go around all the cars and I get to the first one and there's like an emergency crew and they got a guy hanging off the edge on a rope and not you know nobody speaks English and I'm terrible with Spanish so I just kind of park it and wait till I can see what's going on we'll come to find out a car had gone off the cliff and they were like this rescue crew was going down to like drag up four dead bodies like it wasn't even they didn't even send paramedics to save these people. It was like they were assumed dead. This was just the body evacuation crew that showed up. And so this lasted for six hours. I was right there. And as you can imagine, six hours, it raining the whole time. Like all these bikes just kept going around these cars and stacking up. And since I was the first bike there, they're all behind me, right? And I'm like pinned in and... uh they start pulling up that fourth body, right? You know, everybody knows the road's fixing to open up. It was like being at the fucking races. <laughs> People are warming up their bikes. They're fucking revving their engines. They're getting their gear on. And their gear consists of like trash bags and backpacks. 
And they're all on like 250, 300 cc motorcycles. And uh, you know, they the last body, the equipment started failing. So we jump, like a handful of us jump off our bikes and run over there. We're fucking pulling on this road <laughs> to get this this fucking guy out of the way so we can all continue on. And you know, finally we get him up. They clear out, and I swear to you, it was like being at the races. Everybody fucking takes off, and I, I'm like, everybody takes off in front of me. There's probably like, I don't know, five or ten guys behind me, and fifty bikes in front of me. And this is not an exaggeration, and this is on the devil's trampoline. And there's also like cars backed up on the other side, so we all take off, and I'm, you know, I just kind of let everything go. I'm going with the flow. I'm being polite. And then all of a sudden, like in my peripheral, the guys behind me start showing me their front wheel. Now I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> fucking now race mode is really kicking in, you know? And, and, and I just, and it takes over me. Not like I'm proving anything. I got a huge bike. They're all on 200s, but I just start passing everybody, passing them and passing them. And it, it's like a lot of fucking fun. There's a cliff on one side. It's wet. It's still raining. And I get past the, the guy out front and I'm like, fucking sick now i can like take a breather and you know just kind of continue on and i go around a turn and then bam the rear tire locks up and i come to a skidding stop like right at the edge of this fucking cliff oh my like, oh shit and i jump off the bike and realize my chain had popped off and got jammed in between the swing arm and the sprocket and it, i can't roll it like it's not moving there's you know next thing you know i'm laying on the ground fucking undoing the axle and at that, while I'm on the ground in the rain, every single person I just passed is just blowing by me, <laughs> not stopping, not, I mean, maybe they're honking at me and uh, all of them go by. Nobody fucking stops. I finally end up having to pull the whole axle out. It was a fucking shit show. I let it get, the chain is way too loose. So it was really jammed in there. I finally get it all put back together and I'm like, all right, I, now I can really just chill and, you know, enjoy the devil's trampoline and. I go for about an hour and I, you know, I catch up to one guy then I catch up to another guy and then I'm fucking back in race mode. And I just, now I'm just like <laughs> railing again. I'm like, I'm going to pass all these motherfuckers again. And I get to like the last guy and he's pushing his bike. His girlfriend's walking behind it. So I fucking pull over. His chain had popped off. So I fucking <laughs> fix his bike, get him back on the road. And he like looks at me and, you know, says thank you in Spanish and, I can see in his eyes, he's like, fuck, I saw you laying in the middle of the road as I rode by you a couple of hours ago, you know, and I just, I continue on. And at this point I'd been out there for like, I mean, I think it was like fucking eight, 10 hours or some shit, no food. You know, I'd been drinking some water that fell out of the sky and sucking on the shit that was wet, but I come up to the first place that has food. In it, and I'm like, I'm so excited. It's a little roadside stand. And sure enough, it's like a fucking rotisserie with these full size guinea pigs just spinning around. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I do want to partake. I want to know what these taste like, but today is not the fucking day that I want to eat guinea pig, you know? And I, then I realize, I guess I'm not that hungry. And, and then the temperature dropped to like 30 degrees. Now, let me tell you how beat up and worn up I was. By the time I get to the first town, I'm pulling into town and I realize there's fucking tons of cars, tons of motorcycles everywhere. And I started seeing them in the backs of trucks and they're like show bikes. Like there are, these are customized like 100, 200, 300 CC cafe racer, custom paint jobs, like chromed out. But it's like, it's, it's getting close to midnight. It's fucking raining and it's in the 30s. And all I can think about when I pull up to this town that's having this giant motorcycle event is, I bet there's not a fucking warm hotel here. And I just kept going, dude. I just went right through that fucking town that was having a motorcycle show. I was just <laughs> over it, you know? And then next thing you know, this guy on a two-stroke, he's like two dudes on this little two-stroke, start fucking with me. And now I'm chasing them through the mountains in the middle of the night. And I like, I got, I got excited again. <laughs> Roller Got coaster your energy back. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice. and that and that night and that and that night, where you found a place and oh yeah, I found nice a sleep. place. Uh, yeah, I found a place and they had fire in the hotel room, 
And I, you know, I can see it over there in the corner. I like fucking order some fish or whatever. And then I, I go to like start taking off all my shit to go by the fire. And I realize that they had set up this nice little table for this couple that were having like this, you know, nice date dinner, probably an Romantic. anniversary. So yeah. I didn't. You got your I, socks. I didn't you got your even socks go. in the back of the no, chair. I didn't even go. There. I just let him have it. I was like, surely the room's warm. No, there's no fucking heaters. Uh, I was just wet and cold, and I stayed that way and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks for sharing that story. That's, I, that's one day. One day in, in the... Yeah, I should have stopped th at that motorcycle event. Like, I don't know. Like, I look back, I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, why wouldn't I have... I didn't even slow... I mean, I slowed down because I was in town, but I just... Kept going and rode sometimes for another couple Sometimes you just hours. gotta, you just, yeah, sometimes you just gotta go Yeah, it was flow. so much better finding a cold hotel <laughs> <laughs> by myself. Do you think there was actually a motorcycle event happening at midnight? Like, or they were going to street race or something? Or? No, I mean, I think it was like, up it, after was a just, show? it was just like the end of the day. Like they were, got it. I mean, yeah, it wrapped was, up. I don't think it was wrapped up. It was probably just that night, you know, like. So there's people out riding, there's bikes and trucks, you could see street vendors set up, and all I could think about was I'm soaking wet. I, at one point during the day, I left my fucking gear open in one of my bags, like maybe when I was fixing my bike, and all my shit got wet. Like, I was soaking <laughs> wet to the core, all my shit was soaking wet, like, it was an awesome day. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good example of how the whole trip went, though, it was like... You know, it would be awesome, and then it would be fucking like, why am I here, like, by myself? And then it would be awesome, and it was just, sometimes those waves are close together, like, in the same day, and then sometimes it'd be days of just awesomeness, and then all of a sudden I'd get reminded that, you know, it's not always that way. Yeah. When you get to the end, you get to the actual, you know, where you're looking at, um, what's the, the continent that no one goes to? Patagonia. Antarctica. 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 So you were looking at Antarctica, and I was like, did you take a picture of yourself? And you was like, eh, no, didn't even think to. No, I, uh, so when I got to the bottom, like the end of the road sign, I pull up to it, and I took a picture. Uh, okay. But at the same time, busloads of people were just being dropped off to go take their picture. It just didn't, like, seem like the end of the world. You know, like, I was, right. yeah. I was very could disappointed. It didn't Antarctica? feel like I you know, that I had done anything. So I like got on the map. I'm like, there's gotta be something else. And I found a road that was very remote that went off down the beach and like, it went just a little bit further South than where that sign was at. And I, uh, I rode there and it was started raining again. Uh, I get to the end and there's fucking nothing there. There's just the ocean and the trees and a fucking military base that looks like it's deserted, but there's a couple of guys in there. And then all of a sudden, out of the trees, walks this couple. And this fucking guy, in perfect English coat, walks up and goes, congratulations, you made it. And gave me a high five. And I fucking just, like, broke down. I was like, fuck yes! Like, that's, that's what I needed, you know? Like, the, the tourist spot into the roadside didn't do it. But, like, that guy's high five and the, you know, at the end of the world was fucking solid gold. Yeah. Right Can you see Antarctica? Warren's asking. Oh, no. No fucking no, way. No. 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 How far are you from Antarctica? 100 miles? Right now, I'm really far. Yeah, right now, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. You are <laughs> slightly <laughs> closer at that, than we are. At that point, I don't know. Uh, okay. I did look into, like, uh, booking a plane ride, or not a plane ride, a boat ride over there, uh, but it was not, It no, it was expensive. And, and you have to, like, you have to get permission and <clears throat> have a guided guided tour and all yeah that? to get on there i mean but to just take a boat to go look at it you know that's pretty i mean it was still like a few grand it was pretty wow because it's all like cruise ships that take you and you got meals and yeah mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a fucking racket yeah hey dan when you were by yourself traveling because you know i've traveled by myself and it's a little bit it's it's kind of strange, right? Because you're seeing all this cool stuff. You don't really have anyone to share it with, right? To be like, look at that. Or, you know, check. I don't know. You yeah. know, all those yeah. times where you're just like, look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Did you see that? So were you giving your, like, recording voice memos, like, as you went? To, I was. Like, as if. 
I was. I was doing, sometimes I would do it every night. Sometimes it would be days that I wouldn't do it. And then I'd do a big recap. But I mean, I, I mean, that's something that's great about capturing this shit on the, you know, on the phone and being able to at least share it with the internet. You know, it's like, fucking. Right. Uh, but no, it's not the same. And that's honestly why one of the reasons I, you know, I wanted to do this trip years ago. I mean, that sports tour that's in the museum. The reason I built that was to do this. And before I finished that, Bear invited me over to Nepal. And I did that trip and experienced that with the group of people. And I was just like, fuck, this is how to do it. Like, I don't need to ride down there on my own motorcycle. Like, I need to get some friends and we all need to fly to Colombia and ride around. You know, like, yeah. that's kind of where I was at. And then, like I said, this trip, I didn't really plan on it. It just... I was going to see a friend and he was just like, and getting to see my friend in Costa Rica was fucked. Like crossing Central America is not a great idea. Like it's not a great idea if you have like your buds with you. It's just fucked. I mean, I got attacked by a bunch of like masked hoodlums and in the middle of Honduras and fucking they lost my, I mean, it was a mess. So when he said it would be, I should go South. I was like, that sounds easier than going back through Central America at this point. All right. So, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. Well, let's go to Colombia and ride 200cc motorcycles around. Yeah, no, dude, that's the ticket. I mean, that place, and it's fucking, the food's good, it's cheap. There was, you know what blew my mind is there was beautiful women from all over the world with all their shit on their back using public transportation to travel around Colombia. And I was like, I just thought it was a more dangerous place than that. But apparently, they're doing just fine. Right. So yeah. like, one like, bad apple spoils a bunch. Like well, Ecuador and Peru are more I, dangerous than Colombia, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think uh, they have their places. Right. Uh, I mean, I think Colombia has gotten a lot safer than it was, say, pre two thousand seventeen. I think is when it really took a turn for the better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I went to some places like where I could see signs of their resistance, what they call it, the FARC, and like I sketched myself out a couple of times, you know, because I was. I would just find these crazy roads that would just go through the woods and the jungles and the coffee farms. And uh, another idea I had is going to Colombia and buying horses and just go into all the bars and play in Tejon with all the locals and just ride your cow, ride your horse to the next bar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's do it. I, I love listening to not only your stories, Dan, but again, you're someone that has a really great cadence. Has anybody ever told you that before? Uh, no. This is Danger Dan's talk shop. My, my, my family, if everyone in my like family, that. everyone in my family does that. The, my wife and my two kids will do that randomly. We're, we're at dinner and someone will say, "This is Danger Dan's talk shop." <laughs> <laughs> because I listen, we listen to it on car trips. Oh, that's true story. Good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the greatest stories you you were talking about how how you talk into your. Um, when you were alone, those are my favorite podcasts, when you document being alone. And you're like, I'm now on a park bench. Um, there's, there's a story, my favorite one is when you were on your way to the X Games and your uh, motorcycle broke and Jason Rogers picked you up and he doesn't know who Jason Rogers was. Yeah. And you're like, and you're like, let me out. I would rather walk than my bike gets scratched. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, that's documented in live time in your podcast, in your in your phone or whatever you're using at the time. Yeah. That's awesome. That's how I met Jason was on the side of the road. That's so funny. I think that he was on the way that was on the way to California. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the and you're like, I would rather walk walk six hours through the night, cold, pushing my broken sports through than have me have him drive it. But the kicker is for the fear of it getting scratched. <laughs> I don't I don't think you remember in that correctly. <laughs> tell, tell me the <laughs> fill in the I blanks. don't think that's what happened. Uh I don't know what happened. I know that he offered to give me a ride and I was just like, No, no, I think I'm gonna i I'm gonna figure it out. And that that didn't happen. And then somebody else gave me a ride. Okay. <laughs> I think that the universe would like implode if you and Jason Rogers were in the same space at the same oh, time dude, for I love too much Jason for Rogers. too many hours. I know, but there's a that's a lot of energy. Like you know, that's like a black that's like a black hole. Yeah. Uh, but like yeah. a positive black hole. You know what I mean? <laughs> the reverse of a black hole. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's the it's the other side of a black hole. 
Yep. Uh, on, on that trip, I want to just document, that's, that's when I first met you. And I remember the moment that I met you. Um, you, you came up to me, and you, you must have known because of you were in California or, or at the, the, the Born Free show. Uh, and so you were there to, to race, and I didn't know you or who you were really much about you. But you came up to me, and I honestly thought you were you were panhandling outside of the front of, <laughs> of Born Free. <laughs> uh, and, that's awesome. And, but but I, I, I like that. I, I kind of like that energy. Like, I, I you know, I gravitate towards – what's the word I'm looking for, Scott? Give me a vocabulary word here. Did People I, that are – Did I get any money from you? No, no. <laughs> but you just came on to me, and you, like, grabbed my coat, like, you know, like, grabbed my shirt. You know, and like shook my shirt, like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a taken back. I just jumped into your you personal shake some space. change out of your pockets. Yeah. <laughs> like, what does this guy want? And then I was like, oh, oh, hey, man. And I just, I really like, I, I liked your energy. Not only your positive energy, but I already liked you from across the room because of the, what's the word I'm looking for, Scott? When someone is a transgressive. Mm. No? What's the word I'm looking for? Give me a vocabulary no, just, word. I don't know. Just positive energy. No, but he has positive energy, but he also has. A bit of a, uh, a a hobo look, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that I, hobo look that attracted me. I that, think I oh, was this... shaking you down for tires because that was the deal. It's like I think you were shaking me down for you're tires. Like, you know, if we race here, we get some free tires. Like, hey man, I need those fucking yeah. tires now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> now. That's, that's exactly Can I have them now? Yeah. And then I'll just win later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the the only picture I have from that race is like. It made it into the enthusiast, and I'm literally going backwards on the track. And it's <laughs> giant. I'm like, Kirby, what the fuck? Like, that's the picture you picked to put in the magazine. It's me going backwards on the motorcycle track. Well, that's very fitting to the, the video I keep seeing on the interwebs of you and your fucking suit and getting on your bike side saddle and running over fucking tough blocks and big old smile. That one just you should keeps have a coming up. Mouth, that was so good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I didn't want to let it go. I, you know, it wasn't, it was gonna, it wasn't gonna stop running. It was in gear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just hoping to hold on. I didn't want to rip a hole in my pants. So I was like gingerly trying to get that leg over, you know? They just, <laughs> they just weren't built for that. They're not stretchy pants. <laughs> well, let's. Why don't you explain that story to those that don't know? Warren's talking about the video clip, uh, the old it, statement. It went viral at Flat Out Friday of you on Flat Out Friday in slow motion. Uh, you, I don't know. Did, did he fall? How did you? No, come? he didn't fall. Was like, How did he get off the almost, bike? Like rear wheels slipped out, but he saved it. And no, no, no. Fell no. off I, and like kicked off the back. No, I fell to begin with. And oh, that was I, you I getting back up? up? The, the, yeah, the, I picked the bike up and it took off. So I jumped oh, on right. side saddle. Uh, and so that suit I'd gotten in Kathmandu, I don't know, like in November before that. And I wasn't sure, like, where the fuck am I going to wear this suit? And then you guys reached out to me and asked me to take over the podcast. And my buddy Randall was like, you should wear that fucking suit at the podcast. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah, I should take this suit to Milwaukee. I was like, I might as well fucking wear it at the racetrack too, you know? Uh, it seemed like a good idea. To, you know, it was, it's a wild suit. And you saw I that suit, really it, was, it, was, suit. it was in a store or you had that made or what? What's the story? Oh, no, suit? I had that made. So the last, the first time I went to the Paul, Pat from Lead Sled and his buddy Gary and I, uh, I think maybe me, Scott, one too. But anyways, I think Gary had the idea that we should go get fitted for suits. And we did. We all got suits at the beginning of the trip. You get fitted. We pick some, pick some material out, and this guy makes you some custom suits. And at the time, we were not very creative. And the guy that we got to make on, we, they were like shitty used car salesman suits. <laughs> and uh, so when I went back, I'm like, I got to do that again, except for get something more napalese like you know like get some more of the the culture elaborate on some flair so uh, yeah that's how i ended up with that suit that you guys are talking about in the video didn't he didn't he did you say he tried to talk you out of that pattern or something oh yeah no yeah the guy was like uh yeah that's the that's the fabric we use to make women's robes and i was like yeah <laughs> that's 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 what that's I want little, you to make me a suit one. out of yeah. you know <laughs> yeah what would that suit cost would that suit cost you uh, I think it was like a hundred fifty bucks, maybe. Yeah, Stop. yeah. You get the hat. Did you get the pointy shoes too with it? Uh, no, 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 no. Was there a vest? 
There's a vest. Yeah, poots. What is it? Pants, jacket, and a vest. 150 bucks. I think you know nice. it went up this last time. I went over there, and I and I go over there to Nepal with the motorcycle Sherpa Bear Hotton's company. And this last time, uh, I think I paid 190. So the prices are going up. And, <laughs> and I had six, I think six of us all got suits this last trip. And uh, a couple of them, I think, spent over $200. They had, you know, they had some requests. There was quite a bit of flair. Yeah. What, yeah. like bell bottoms or, you know, special uh, like, maybe, stitching maybe, on the pockets or something? No, maybe it was the material, you know. All right. All I right. think the one I got this year was, Fair like, enough. made out of curtains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll bring it. Okay, we're looking forward to it. I know. <laughs> what color is it? It's it one made of out of like like a yak fur, like a whole yak, oh, you know, gosh, man. Like, like just a, like just with that long hair, you know, suit. just like yeah. That's a pretty <laughs> good idea. The abominable snowman. I got a yak tail. Really? Yeah. Did you, he you, he probably wasn't too happy about you cutting that thing off. Yeah, no, I don't want to tell that story here, but I got a <laughs> yak tail. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, Some look, things are just not good for the animal. I got a black one and a white one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same way you got the, the um, flamingo leg? No, no. <laughs> the flamingo leg, no. It's different. Sorry. <laughs> these, these are inside jokes that we will let the consumer or the listener uh, fill in them at their imagination. <clears throat> Wait, Dan, because you're, cause you're in Texas and you, and you have a place in New Mexico too, so you, you ride through Mexico a lot. You, it's, it's really – it's something common for you, right? So like for the listeners out there who are like, whoa, riding through Mexico, I've done it once before. Yeah. But like it's – what's it like? Like well, what, do you, well, what our, do you love about it? And, our place is in New Mexico. Yes, but I'm right. saying, but like, just you're you're in the. It's like we're close to Canada. Like people would be like, "Why don't oh, yeah, you go yeah. run through Canada all the time?" Oh well, Mexico's awesome, and it's like yeah, it is awesome. You know, it it really feels adventurous when you go to some place where they're not really speaking your language. The signs are in a different language. Uh, the food's totally different. The roads are are you know some of them are great, some of them aren't. Uh, you know, it's just got a real outlaw vibe down there. And yeah, it's fun and it's exciting, you know, like, you know, it's obviously fun to travel on your motorcycle anyways, but you add an element of danger. It's just exciting, you know, yeah. and it's beautiful, too. I mean, the that country is really, really, I mean, you go from the mountains down to the desert into the ocean within a few hours, all on the same day. Uh, it's yeah. pretty fucking epic. Yeah. Have you, you said you were looking forward to taking some trips down there this year. Do you have a couple of destinations in mind? I do. I want to ride down the bo I want to. So normally, when I've the past few years, I've gone to the El Diablo run on the chopper, and I've gone straight through central Mexico, and then up the Baja to San Felipe. This year, I want to go the other direction, but on the Pan America, and do a lot more off roading through the Baja, and then take the ferry back over and go straight through the mountains. Like I, there's some roads that. I want to go explore that go through the Sierra Madres and cartel country. And uh, I tried to do them on my chopper last year and it just didn't work. You know, they're, yeah. they're fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dan, Dan, tell us about this sportster that you have here in Milwaukee in the, in the museum. Oh, man, that's a cool bike. I uh, Funny side story first is I was talking to David Creedler the other day. And I was like, hey, man, I'm coming back to Milwaukee. The curator of the of the exhibit at the yeah, museum. Yeah, yeah, he, he works at the museum. And so I'm like, hey, I'm coming to Milwaukee for Mama Tried. If you need to stash my bike until I get there, that's cool. Or I can get it when I get there. Just, you know. He was like, oh, that's that's funny. But you signed a contract and we got it till 2025. And I was like, <laughs> another year, dude? I was like, I need to see that in writing again. Like, it's right here, you know? Uh, but no, that Sportster I built uh, 2018 or 19. I built it, I guess, after the X Games that we were talking about, you know, where I met you. Uh, I ended up giving that bike away on the show that I raced at the X Games. This kid in Florida is still ripping it. There's no title or nothing. 
Uh, I think he still got. I think he still puts flat track tires on it too and rips it around the seat. He did add some giant up sweeps. He made the up sweeps even longer. Uh, but I gave that away and I got another Sportster and built uh, a dirt bike out of it. And I raced the Mint 400 with it and then I turned it into a dirt bike after that, like a full on adventure bike with bags and a sissy bar and luggage rack and a fairing and started riding that around and it was fucking awesome. And I think that's honestly what's helped me out with this big adventure bike, the Pan America, was riding that Sportster around that wasn't really designed to do that, but it was a big heavy bike. And, uh, man, that thing worked really well and that Pan America just works a lot better actually. Uh, <laughs> but it was like a good transition. I didn't really see that coming, but yeah. Was, that's, that's cool. And then they, uh, it kind of got parked when I got the Pan America. And then uh, you guys hit me up, and now it's in the museum. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> and anybody that, you know, wonders why that's in the museum, that's, that's a side story. That, <clears throat> yeah. that has a unique history from Danger Dan. Yeah. Can I go back to the Pan Am real quick? Um, I'm not – I'm asking for an honest question, and I'll pretend you're talking to someone that doesn't know anything about the industry. So tell me about this Pan Am. Why is it why is it a good uh, motorcycle? Why is it a bad motorcycle? Why is it a good motorcycle? Well, all motorcycles are good. First, oh, foremost. bold statement. <laughs> and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go as far to say that, uh, dude, is fucking fast as shit. So when I first got this, I, you know, I immediately had it painted, uh, and I I rode it to Tennessee, and at first I fucking hated it because I was just going down the highway, just sitting there like, this is. You know, I'm just sitting up like it just didn't feel right. I'm just thinking like, oh, I can get rid of all the suspension and make it a chopper that's really fucking fast. And, and then I get to Tennessee and I run into a fucking truck, like literally <laughs> run into a truck. And I picked it up and, you know, it started up. And like, I think that's when we first like really bonded. It was after riding in the dirt and crashing together and. Uh, that that clip got went viral too, right? When because that truck like turned left in front of you yeah. when you were on a on the like pulling into the the event, right? Yeah, I was I was actually <clears throat> so I was at the event for a couple of days, and I'm pretty busy there. And there was this kid on a Tenere 700, and he kept like talking shit from a distance, you know, like I I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but I could tell he was like egging me on or talking shit about me and my motorcycle. And at some point I was at the Harley booth and talking to one of the engineers and he's like, so what do you think of the bike? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't really like it right now. Like I haven't, but I haven't ridden it, you know, like I'm, I don't know. And then that guy on the tin rig pulls up and he's like, Hey, let's see if that bike can keep up with mine. And I was just like, yeah, let's do that. So I fucking, <laughs> I follow this guy into the woods and we just start ripping on these fire roads and, jumping over logs and doing this hill climb. And I'm like, damn, this is sick. Like, and the whole time the kid's looking behind me to see if I'm behind him. And I'm like buffing this fucking license plate with my front tire. Like I'm just like staying on it. And we get back to the, the campground and he parades me by where all the dirt bikers are hanging out. Now he's bragging about me. Being, like he's bragging about the bike. Like you guys don't believe what I just saw this bike do, blah, blah, blah. And, I'm like, now nah, I'm stoked. And we uh, we end up racing down the pavement, and I just fucking blister his ass. And then we get to the front gate, and now I'm in front of him. And we're, you know, we're going back to the inside of the facility, and this truck started going slow, so I just decided to go around him. Well, I know this. That spot, you can't – the vehicles are not allowed to go. It's only motorcycles. And – the only place he has to go is left, but I'm just thinking like how much I fuck, how much fun I just had on this bike, and then bam, we fucking collide. I get up and just take off running. I just I can't even. <laughs> I'm like I went from being stoked to not stoked really fast. <laughs> but I just, I take off running and I'm like okay everything works good. Like I was shocked and now I'm just thinking about how fucked up my bike is and I get over there and that kid on the tin race already got it picked up and he's holding it. And I, and I see the GoPro on his head, and I'm like, damn. You, like, and, or at first, I guess I look at the bike, and I'm like, there's fucking, I can't see anything wrong with it. I'm just like shocked, you know? And then I see him, and he's got the GoPro, and I'm like, dude, did you film that? And he's like, no. And, I, 
and I can see the red light blinking, but I'm at this point, I'm like, whatever. I don't, you know, like I'm not trying to have this conversation right now. And the guy in the truck has gotten out and he's asking me if I'm okay. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm fine. And he asked me again and I'm like, dude, I'm fine. And then I see blood like fly over his head. <laughs> I look at my arm and just realize that like there's the skin's gone on my right side of my arm. And he was freaked out that he hit me. You know, I, it was my fault. I'm trying to leave as fast as possible. Uh, so I take off and it, it was a brand new truck. We both had paper plates on our vehicle and I take off. I think I just parked it at the river and just walked like fully closed straight into the river to wash all the dirt and blood off me. And then some Indian lady like picks some weeds out of the ground that she said were medicine and like put them on my arm. And, and then all of a sudden that kid comes up from the, that's, that's the Tenere and the GoPro. And he's like, dude, I got it all on video. And I'm like, what the fuck? I, I, mean, I saw it. He's like, well, I didn't want to say anything in case there was incriminating evidence on the camera. I didn't want him to know that I had it on video. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking smart, you know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he, he showed me the video. He has since then sold his Yamaha and bought a Sportster that he turned into a dirt bike. Right. And I see him at Tennessee every year. That's uh, great. That's but, cool. I mean, I did that, and I ended up – well, the next day I was going to go on a ride with Lichter. And when I hit the truck, it, it ended up smashing the crash guard into – the radiator hose and the radiator hose was smashed into the the exhaust pipe so it was obvious that that shit was gonna melt uh and i needed to fix it and um it's like zz tops playing on stage i'm behind backstage with my bike my friend carlos and josh kirpius and i'm like dude i gotta fix this bike i gotta i gotta go for a ride in the morning you know and <clears throat> kirby's is like man that's the thing with these new bikes you know like you can't really just fix them you gotta like buy new parts you know i know you don't know about this yet dan but, uh, you know this isn't our chopper and i'm like no fuck that josh like if this happened to me you know so like i i like there, i gotta fix it. like we, we have to fix it right now so he's like what are we gonna do just like fix it with what's in our hands and i'm like yeah that's what we're gonna do it and he's holding a beer can and fuck we ended up making a heat shield out of the beer can and cramming it in between the exhaust pipe and the radiator hose and that fucking beer can is still there. I rode all the way to the bottom of South America with that beer can in there. And I proved Josh wrong. I'm like, this is like my fucking chopper if I own it. And I'm like, I will figure out a way to fix this fucking thing. All right. So that's the good thing about it is it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, you can be fixed, you know. You can break it yeah. and you can fix it. Yeah. I think I'll do. I would do that with any motorcycle. I know a lot of people ask me, like, "Well, what do you think about the Pan America?" I'm like, "Man, my newest dirt bike was a 1977 XT500 and my '59 Chopper. This 2021 motorcycle is fucking incredible. It goes fast as shit and it stops. It's got front brakes and rear brakes. I'm, I'm not, not the person to ask. Suspension. You know? like, if you're gonna compare it to another modern bike, I'm like, I don't, you know, this thing's fucking incredible." Where is this bike right now? Uh, it's in my shop. I was just actually like going over it because I'm going to take it on a ride next week. Nice. And you, you told this story at the last Mama Tried. It was a two Mama Trides ago, right? You, you, he had a, a, a display. He had the bike on display. Yeah. Right? Oh, that yeah. That was probably two years ago. That was two last year. Ago? Last year. Last year. And, and you told these stories. People must have been curious, like listening to this. No, I, I was stuck in a dungeon talking to people all day long. Oh, that's right. I, you got sucked into that gig. <laughs> Poor was, choices. Was no, last year was, when we did I the was, two shows back to back? No. Or was that two years no, ago? That was, that was two years ago. He he just You had your bike shipped up, right? Yeah. And so it just I, showed up. It barely made it through customs. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I, that's I, right. I, it showed up in Milwaukee with a bunch of coca leaves in the tank bag. <laughs> there was a flamingo leg sitting on top. I can't believe it made it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you didn't check the box that you were bringing livestock back. No, they didn't, uh, or I didn't check that box. But the reason I was telling that story is like when I first got that bike, it goes really fast, and I got pulled over like six times that summer, like you know for speeding. And every single time, the cop would be like, you know, you know how fast you were going. And I'm like, I was going fast as shit. You know, this bike is really <laughs> fast. And they'd be like, oh man, that's the new Harley Pan America. And I'm like, yeah. 
And I didn't get any <laughs> tickets or nothing. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, nice. you're, you're, I'm sure your positive and upbeat attitude was yeah, the, the reason I, why, not I, the bike. I find that if you, like, communicate with those cops when they ask you questions, instead of just, like, telling them why they shouldn't have pulled you over, uh, yeah. they're pretty receptive, yeah. you know? Same same here. <laughs> yeah. What, what, do you so know what why I pulled you over? Like, dude, I was speeding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got uh, me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I got a, there's a couple reasons you should have pulled me over. Uh, <laughs> which one yeah. did you pick? Yeah. I got two kids in the back. It's late. I'm the only one out here. Yeah, I was doing 20 over. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Lost Just lost our sound. Oh, oh, there it is. There it's we back. Are. Oh, oh, it's gone. Gone again. It, hang on, oh. Danger Dan. We have a... Oh, hold on. Technical. Oh, we there's have something a, a that's loose wire. Like, it's Just for the record, on my out. side, everything works great. All right. Yeah, All we right, sounded great. Now we're good. We're back. Oh, we're good. Thank you. Hey, hey, Danger Dan, I, got, I just got a couple questions I want to ask you that I've never heard in your podcasts, or if I missed them, but some basic housekeeping stuff. This is a question that I've asked all of our guests. You know, you have a nickname, Danger Dan. When did this first come about? Well, you know, where, 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 how old were you? What, you know, what, what's the, the situation when that first was sprouted? Uh, into? You earn. You how know, you earn they you? say that you can't give yourself your own nickname, right? Yes. That's not true. <laughs> okay. I uh, I was playing in a band called Walker and the Texas Dangers, and mm-hmm. they wanted we were you know we were doing some things and they were like everybody's got to set up a social media page. I think it was like MySpace or Facebook, uh, and we were traveling, but I was on probation and I wasn't allowed to leave the county. So I didn't want to put my name on the internet and then post <laughs> pictures of me drunk at a bar in another state. So that's when I came up with Danger Dan because <laughs> I was one of the Texas Dangers. That's great. And uh, that's a good story. Yeah, that's. And, and then and it tell just, me, yeah, go ahead. Well, so tell me a little bit about your your wife then, Careful Kate. Okay. <laughs> we started this podcast with Warren telling us about his his contentious relationship with his wife, and it's a beautiful relationship. In the kitchen. Well, it's <laughs> but it's it's a powerful relationship, and that's what I like about your relationship because you guys are always yelling at each other, but, but with passion and love, and <laughs> it all sorts itself out. Tell me about careful Kate and what your relationship is with your wife and what she thinks about all this global traveling. Uh wow! I know I never asked her. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh no my wife's amazing uh she she is excited to stand behind me and do whatever it is to help me do like she really this isn't possible without her you know if she wasn't here holding this shit together um i i don't know that i would even have made it the past few years i mean that's uh she is she is the rock you know yeah. she's honestly what makes it you know, my favorite thing about traveling is turning around and coming home. You know, like yeah. that last part of the yeah. trip where it's like, all right, I've seen that shit. Now it's time to go home. Uh, and that's honestly, it, I think it's really been good for our relationship. And it kind of started out that way. I was playing music. I would leave and come back. Um, and it's you know, it's changed, but that's always kind of been there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really like, you know, it stokes the fire being away. And sometimes she's like, get the fuck out of here. You've been home too long. You know, yeah. I, I, sometimes she flat out says, I got, you got to go. You know? <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the same way in our household. Stacy's the same way. She supports it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's the rock. She holds all the shit down. Yeah. That's why she probably is the way she is in the kitchen. <laughs> you, you guys want to hear something fucked up? And she was really nice about the way she said it tonight. She was like, or it was earlier today. She was like, hey. Can you sit down with me and go over the calendar? Because I know that you've booked some things without telling me about them. I'm like, no, I haven't. She's like, yes, you have. Uh, she was right. But it, she's like, let's start with February. And I'm like, okay, I got, I don't know what I got. I got Mama Tried, right? Yeah, I got Mama Tried. Is that on there? She's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go with you this year. And I'm like, okay. She's like, um, yeah, I just, you know. You'll be at the. You'll be busy all day Friday, so I think I'll just celebrate our anniversary <laughs> you know, at, at, a, at another point in time. I was just like, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I was just speechless. I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> can can we send her a pair a care gotcha. package? Would that help? Is there something we can do, or we only make it worse? I don't do anything. Can we send her a mama tried hoodie? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Okay. I mean, what was that thing we all sent the wives in Sturgis that? Kevin oh yeah, the uh, 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 fruity bouquet. It was a bouquet like? of fruit. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Explain this. I don't know what you mean. We were all sitting there. It was cold, wet, and shitty. But we were away from home, and somebody was talking shit about sending their wife some flowers, and it came about like, wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> it was Kevin. It was uh, Teach. Teach did it. Yeah, yeah. And then we all sent her our phones. Yeah, we all got on the internet and. <laughs> Send a gift to our wives. One of those edible edible bouquets. arrangements. <laughs> yeah, it's the little things that count. I got to remember that. Nice. That is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dan, tell me a little bit about your a little bit about your music. Many of our guests are are musicians, and I think that's a stream between the um, nomad lifestyle, I guess, that we are, are akin to, and and musicianship. But tell me a little bit about your bands. These are country bands. You 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 play the drums. Tell me a little bit more about this. I mean, I played in a handful of bands. Right now, I play with the Outbound Train. And we do about two gigs a year. That's where I got, I got it capped. Like yeah, you're kind of like you too. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, outbound train, two piece band. It's a it's a jazz orchestra. Give me a little bit more about it. Uh, three piece band. Well, four piece. We just we got a new. I think we almost have a new member. He's got a motorcycle now. He has to ride it to a gig for it to be legit. So <laughs> okay. So I guess he's a prospect still, if you will. <laughs> uh, but he's a shredder on the guitar. Uh, we got lead guitar, stand up bass, and my and Al plays the guitar and writes the songs. And you play the drums. I play the drums. And how do you fit your drums on your chopper? It's tough. <laughs> no, no. Doghouse gets a pass. Doghouse, the bass player, has a van, so he was grandfathered into the situation. But everybody else okay. has to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have band practice? Yeah. Or you, in in Dallas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in, 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 usually uh, in it's Texas? like usually it's like the week before we have a gig. Okay. Yeah. What's the next gig? What, we, uh, Born Free, um, Texas. Uh, no, the Texas Fandango. All right. Yeah, that's in April. Yep. Yeah, that's the one our next gig is. We won't have you being. You can't play by these rules. You can't play, Mama tried. I'd invite you, but you can't do it. Yeah, it's. I mean, we can't. We, to, yeah, we have to ride to the gig. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, I quit. I quit that band, Walker and the Texas Dangers. We were out on tour, and uh, I was on my bike, and the fuckers pissed me off. So I rode home from someplace in fucking Iowa or Illinois or some shit. And I actually I rode to my buddy Al's house, the kid I play with now, and he plays music and rode motorcycles. And I told him that I wasn't going to play music anymore until everybody in the band rode motorcycles. And that was like. <laughs> probably 11 years ago or 10 years ago. Anyways, finally one day he hit me up. He's like, let's do it. It's time to start that band. So we did that about three, four years ago. All right. So, so let me go back to this. You're, you're a great band. Your shows are selling out. You're touring across the country. But the line in the sand was, these guys don't ride motorcycles to the show. <laughs> no, no, no. So I started, like, the I got the bike. You know, I'd been in the band. We had been on the road in the van. And then I get a motorcycle and I start touring on the motorcycle and it just created this division. It was like, it, it, it just, you know, they weren't having as much fun as me. And then they started getting bummed about it. You know, they're like, fucking Dan just gets to go do whatever he wants during the day. And then he meets up at the gig and, and parties and then leaves us again. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was doing. And it was awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I wanted to get some of that documented. I, I don't. I didn't know any of those things. None of those things have been documented in any of your podcasts. So I tried to find some questions that maybe people didn't know. I, you did a good job. All right. <laughs> Dean, can, where can we find? Uh, do you have recordings online? People could listen to this band. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a there's a video. We made a YouTube video called the Cosmic Sessions. The Outbound Train, Cosmic Sessions. We have a vinyl. There's nothing online. You just have to get the vinyl. All right. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have any of them. Is this is this cover <laughs> cover songs or are you guys do originals? Ah, uh, no, these are all originals. Oh, all right. Where's the second place you play? Or is that it's a moving thing, moving target. 
your What's second that? Your gig. Sec- your you second said Fandango gig was your first oh, one. Where's your where's born, the second gig? Born Free Texas. Got it. Yeah, Got Texas it. Fandango, Born Free Texas. Now the other guys, they play all the time. They have other gigs and acts, and yeah, I just I only play twice a year. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, well, how, how are we how are we doing on time? Are we this is about we try to keep our podcast to an hour. I mean, not, unlike some of them that go four hours, our podcast try to keep to an hour. Brian, how are we doing on time here? We're at an hour. We're at an hour. Okay, uh, I just got I want to summarize. Then you're coming to Milwaukee, Dan. What's well, tell me about what you expect to happen? What can we do to make your time uh, more fun? Uh, what are what are some things you're looking forward to seeing? What man? I I I like going to Milwaukee. I want to see snow on the ground. I want it to be hard to get around. I like I want just the roads covered in snow. Uh, I look forward to going to all the uh, the mini bike races that you're gonna do, Jeremy. You know, I mean that's gonna be awesome. Just hanging out and watching people ride mini bikes where they probably shouldn't be riding mini bikes <laughs> and racing. On top of that, I've I've got some cool podcasts set up, uh, and I really look forward to doing that. I talked to Tim over at the museum. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a trivia game show, a trivia podcast at the museum. Really hard questions. I hope everybody gets all the answers wrong. Um, I talked to Brian. I think we're gonna set up and do a couple of podcasts in the swimming pool at cool. the at oh, the rave, wow. like right there in the deep end. Wow! Yeah. I think that'll yeah, be that's fucking. Good. That's sweet. a big deal. I know. That's awesome. Uh, you that, got, you're doing that. You're doing that ahead of time, right? You're not going to waste Saturday in the in the doldrums, right? You're going to get all that content prior. Most of it. Okay, good. Most of good. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see yeah. your shining, happy smile I'll up on that there. floor. I'll be there. I'm excited. I mean, one of my favorite things about Mama Tried is the people that you invite. You know, it's like, it's it's so great. I meet some of the greatest people there, and I get to see some of the greatest people that I know in Milwaukee. When I first heard about Mama Tried Motorcycle Show. I was like, what the fuck could those idiots possibly be doing in the middle of the fucking winter? Like, that's, you don't have to have motorcycle events then. Uh, and then I finally went, and I've, I've just been in love with it ever since. You know, I met, I don't know, I think we've talked about this before, but the guy I met who worked at the Wisco, the bar in uh, Madison, in Madison, yeah. He told me about you guys. He was on his panhead. I was on tour with my shovel head or my, I think that was my twin cam at that point. But yeah, I'm just glad to be a small part of the show. I'm stoked to be there and see you guys. Right. And, and, and there was one part of that question I I want you to, I want to focus in on. What what can we do for you? What can we do to, to welcome you here? Oh, it, what, you guys have already done way too much. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Perfect. Well, we're hoping the weather is good too and cold, good and cold for people that are coming from out of town because I feel like that adds to the experience and having some ice. If we get well, ice right, and we haven't had that in the last few years. I, so. d- I just thought about something though. If you bust out the snowmobile again in town, I want to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> Done, man. It's I'm yours. Keep your fingers crossed. You know, you know, we told that story here, Dan. T- from your perspective, tell me what that what you saw Warren doing. Tell me, you know, about I didn't that see Warren doing anything. I saw well, a clearly because you weren't on the snowmobile. No, I saw a bunch of random drunks just like taking over some snowmobile that was in the streets. I'm just like, <laughs> who is this at? If I had known it was Warren's, I would have jumped on it too. But I was like, you know, just kind of letting them do their thing. But I, it looked fucking awesome. I was just yeah. glad to see that happening too. I'm like, damn, these crazy fucking Milwaukeeans <laughs> out riding their sled to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it worked out well. I, I hope for a foot of snow myself, so we can yeah. we can make that a, an annual thing. I would love to see the ice racing too. That would that happened the first year, and just seeing the bikes on the ice was fucking sweet. So yeah. I hope that that works out. Is it cold up there? Is it freezing? I mean, you guys are all wearing jackets indoors, so it's got to be it's, cold. It just snowed last night, and it's about to get really cold tomorrow. Yeah, this weekend. We're, so we'll hopefully, have, we'll, we'll have pre- freezing temperatures for the next week. Yeah, but who knows if it'll hold? It's been yeah. it's been pretty mild. But I mean, we've probably we'll have by the by Saturday, Saturday morning, we'll have like eighteen, nineteen inches of snow in in a week, which is kind of rare. Yeah, it's not is a your, common thing. Is your hockey rink up? My hockey rink is up. Uh, yeah, Just I, waiting, I have a hockey rink up. Cold. I'd love to show it to you. Yep. Yeah. It's why don't be, we uh, Why don't we race there? <laughs> okay, it's possible. <laughs> 
I have a hockey rink in my yard. It's about 20 feet by 50 feet, but we can figure something out. Yeah. I mean, that's about the same size as Flat Out Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not much smaller. It's just scale. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be, it's gonna be one degree uh, this week uh, one, uh, yeah. on Monday. One, one degree. I, I only tell you that just for a little shock and awe that it's going to get cold here. So, Dude, they're saying hopefully. it's going to get eight degrees here. Damn. Whoa, really? Yeah. That's cold for y'all. That's fucking real <laughs> cold, dude. My dumb ass is like planning on camping that night, too. Really? Yeah. Where? I, I, in, in Big Bend in West Texas, right there on the border of Mexico. There's actually a hot springs. I'm planning on just sleeping in there all night long. <laughs> 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 you told me it was so hot in Texas one time. You went outside, walked past your grill, and you thought it was turned on. You turned the propane off because you actually thought the grill was on. <laughs> that's a true story. Yeah, that's an image of how hot it is in Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Well, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, this has been great. I look forward to coming to Milwaukee next month. And uh, we should do something for my wife, you know. I think that I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure something out. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. What can we do for you? Let's let's figure out something for your wife. Yeah. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> we always like to see her up here, so. We we are a family and a community here. We are, you know, we we work in our our, our significant others, our families, our boys, our our, our girls. Um so we 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 feel you for leaving your wife on the anniversary. That's that's something that doesn't isn't lost with this crowd at all. I mean, I what was I thinking about getting married on February 23rd? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know something the, funny no. about that? Is my parents and her parents got married on the same day. That's oh. jaw dropping. Wow. And I thought it was February 23rd. So I decided to marry my wife. I just eloped. We got married at the beach. And this fucking winter storm blew in. I drove through the snow to get to the ocean in Texas. And then we couldn't even do it on the dock because she would have blown away. And I get home and I'm like, Dad, why the fuck would you get married in February in Texas? He's like, I didn't. <laughs> I just had the dates all wrong. So, <laughs> so it shouldn't be a shocker that I've totally forgot that our anniversary is <laughs> February 23rd. Yeah. Um, anyway, very like you though. I think that's it. And just go for it. Yeah. 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 For sure. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Great Mr. to see you, Dan. Mr. Danger. Good to see you. Yeah, all. yeah man. Looking yeah. forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Adios, Peace. muchacho. <laughs> closing closing thoughts for uh, Danger Dan. Well, I um, he's again. I think for me, he's the uh, the godfather of what I'm trying to do with this podcast. Maybe you guys have different goals with what this podcast is, but I I think it's just so genuine, so um, so unscripted. So uh, outlaw, he used to, at the beginning of his podcasts, he used to have music and it was, it was, it sounded to me like NPR quality. I, when I first heard it, I assumed this guy had producers and, and, uh, and, and an editing team. And then he showed up at my house and he put a recorder on the kitchen table and that was it. Yeah. And then, yeah. and, and I was like, Hey, you know, can I edit that out? And he's like, no, nope, we don't do any editing. <laughs> and, and and he and he left his his clothes drying on the fence and i was like you might want to take those with you and he's like no one's going to steal my clothes <laughs> and I, he was right and actually i then i, I uh, the, the river west hostel had just opened up he just rolled into town in the river west hostel so a hostel in our neighborhood you know a communal living kind of a traveling place and um a cheap place to stay instead of a hotel room yeah uh, I, I paid for him to stay there, and it wasn't that cheap. And um, it was neat to just see his his insight uh, of of River West and uh, his insight into my life. He's just brutally honest with a big smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a good way about about life, and you know, seeing him at, at all the rallies and and wherever you get to see Dan, you know, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah. You know, and and a happy Joe Wheeler. You're gonna meet some people. You're gonna be nervous. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna feel all the feelings mm -hmm. and 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 he he has um, waxed and waned with 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 using alcohol, for example. And my my point is, none of that has ever been re related to the good time I've had with him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Here. Nothing. When I've ever had a good time with him, it's never been. You know, there was references to drugs and alcohol all through that, but my times with him have just been so genuinely happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the alcohol and drugs is irrelevant. Yeah, he's yeah, got a good spirit. Yeah, he is the spirit animal of an optimal life. <laughs> <laughs>
Whoa. <laughs> Hold statements. <laughs> Hey, if we were to if we were to have this podcast this time now, uh, I, I want to remind um, our listeners that we do have a show coming up. It's, it's we took a little time off because I feel as though we've scraped every motorcycle person in the city of Milwaukee. There are many more. There are a lot of great, interesting people here. I think we just wanted to take a break from our local crew, start instituting this new process of getting uh, remote guests. Yeah, we have a plethora of remote guests. We want to start working in. So, so my point is, those of you that were eagerly awaiting by your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Where have those guys been? Well, I think we took a natural holiday break. And um, and we're back and we'll start doing this regularly. But it seems like a long time since we ever talked about our show and the whole reason why we do this. When I say show, I mean the Mama Tried Flat Out Friday race weekend. is coming up in February. I don't know if I need to necessarily say the dates uh, other than everything is the same. Everything that you've expected to see from Tuesday to Sunday is yeah, is on the docket. Yeah. Nothing has left. There's no major changes. Hey, what's going on with Mama Tried? Well, I have no questions other than the history we've done. Yeah, 10 years this year. I'm going to blow it out. Have a good time. February 23rd, 24th, 25th. That's the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then we have all the stuff that happens in the week before. Mm -hmm. And we'll and we can a snowmobile on the street. Yes. Oh, and we can unpack all of that in a, in a later podcast. But I just want to make sure that we're hammering that in, that that is what we do ultimately. That is what... Yeah, pressure is building. Do yeah. you feel it yet? As soon as New Year's Day, the sobriety of New Year's Day dawned, and I know that we all <laughs> thought this, we'll take Christmas off. And then the New Year's Day happens, and holy crap, I'm we way behind. Got, yeah, we got a lot to do. Yeah, today was a busy day for me all of a sudden. I don't know why. I told Tor that. Um, I had a conversation with him about planning his event um, coming up his event, the one motor show. And he said, that's why he doesn't do his event in February anymore. Cause it's like, he's like, I only have one month to plan because yeah. I take Christmas off or I take holiday off. It only gives me a month to plan. So I needed to move it back. Smart. Or, Smart I, couldn't, move. or I couldn't take a Christmas break. Yeah. 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 Well, that's where we are. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for leading this. Brian. Yeah. Thanks for the, uh, for the technology. Um, we've, I feel like we've, we, we jumped a whole bunch of steps yes. to, we learned some things today. I yeah. think it went really well, but I think a TV would help. But. You know what I'm thinking? You need two of them things. Yeah. Because one's going to be in transit if we're going to try to do this weekly. Yeah, well, it actually worked. This is the first time. We can talk about this off air, but, um, but let's talk about that off air. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to say that I, I slurred my words there a little bit. I'm having a, a uh, with Danger Dan, I'm having a little, what is it called? Vertigo. Vertigo. Vertigo when I when I'm with his voice in this. So I gotta get used to that, is all I'm saying. I'm not used to this high quality shit. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're really crisp and like yeah. you know. It's a little off throwing. Like the first time we were in a punk band and they had monitors, and yeah. you're like, ugh. <laughs> That's what you sound like? That's what I sound like. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right, let's call it. All right. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.